All right, so we're on. Uh, hey everyone, my name is Noah Elliott. I am a Paralympic champion, Paralympic gold medalist, and bronze medalist from the Paralympic Winter Games in 2018. And I am also the program outreach coordinator here at Steamboat Star of Adaptive Sports. And we are excited because we are being presented this awesome opportunity to help people with spinal cord injuries from the Craig H. Nielsen Foundation. And today we have Sadie joining us. Sadie, what's up? I know. Well, your introduction was um, a lot smoother than mine is probably going to be. But uh, <laughs> yeah, my name is Sadie Tobin. I had uh, the pleasure of meeting Noah this past year. Um, uh, strength and conditioning coach for the Paralympic snowboard and alpine ski team. Um, I love working with athletes. It's been a passion my whole life. Um, this was my first year actually working with adaptive athletes and it's been absolutely incredible. So I'm new to the journey and I love learning um, all new things along the way and being creative and I'm, I'm happy to be here. So we uh, are both pretty lucky. We're here in Steamboat Springs, um, Noah, I think he saw how cool it was where I live, so he decided to come and watch. <laughs> uh -huh, I see how it is. <laughs> we're, we're pretty lucky. Um, we get to be in this amazing place, and I'm really happy to, to be part of the STARS program right now. Totally. Thank you so much for joining us again. And yeah, it's been a pleasure working with you so far and getting to know you a little more. And, uh, you know, having Taco Tuesdays in Canada with sombreros on our heads to, uh, flying back in the airport from Norway after this uh, whole pandemic hit us. So it's been a wild journey. Yes, for sure. For sure. And hopefully we'll all come out a little bit better after it. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Sadie, thank you again. Uh, first, I want to talk about, you know, what is the importance of a moving body? Oh, that's a loaded question there, Noah. The importance of a moving body. I mean, it, it all comes down to, I think, for me and what I try to teach um, all the athletes I come in contact with is just, is the longevity of being an athlete for life, right? Yeah. The, the importance to move is, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's unlike, it's like breathing, you know, you, right. you have to have it. Um, and, you know, there's so much science and research on the mind body connection now. Um, and we can't really ignore that. If, if you're moving and you're staying active, your mental clarity, your happiness, um, it, it all goes together. You know, it's, it's a puzzle that's always changing and some things are going to work a little bit better than others at times. But, you know, when, when you're able to move and you're, you're able to manage pain and you can, you can work on, um, things, it's, it's pretty powerful. Right. And if, if we, it's, you know, it's hard to, hard to kind of put into words like the, the importance of it. Okay. Um, you know, you need it for daily activity to get from point A to point B, but you also need it, I think, um, to really have a, a true meaning, meaningful life and yeah. to be able to, you know, you know, your heart health, your, Everything. you know, your, your relationships with other people, you know, if you can, if you can move and you can be active and you can um kind of provide your body what it needs we need to be moving we're, we're creatures of you know of staying active and that's yeah. what we crave both through our body and our mind you know i think that's really important um yeah. i love the way you put that too you know we do need to be moving plus you think about it you know when we're old you don't want to be old and riggedy and weak you know if as long as you're moving you can get a little bit stronger so definitely love the way you put that you know you got to keep moving exactly one of one of my my uh philosophies someone asked me one time is um what do you train for right which okay. is a pretty interesting concept um and I was a, a retired soccer player at the time, and I was like, what do you mean, what do I train for? I'm, I'm done. Yeah, you know? <laughs> over with that. Um, but I came up with this, you know, uh, uh, tried to answer in a way, I train now so I can say yes to things. And that's been a really, um, a message I've been trying to get across to all different athletes, you know? And, and when I say athletes, I mean any human being, right? Yeah. Cause, because you you are capable of moving and you can do it and um, you can become an athlete of your own sport, whatever that is. But to be able to say yes to things, if that means, you know, whether it's going to meet up with a friend in a park mm -hmm. just to hang out, you can say yes because you can get from your bed to the door. Exactly. Right? exactly. And so that, that to me is, it's, it's not training necessarily to, um, you know, 
win a gold medal like you in the Olympics, but it could right. be, right. it could be, you know, your own, your, your champion of your own life and you can really take leadership and understanding like you want to say yes to the opportunities that are ahead of you. And if you have some basic line of movement and you can move, then you can work from there and you can work your, your way up to being able to say yes to things you really want to do. Yeah. And saying yes, being able to say yes, uh, is actually a huge confidence booster, you know, being able to have that confidence, being able to like, I can say yes to this and go and do it. And, uh, that, that's, that's strong right there and powerful, you know, a question for you too. I've been thinking about it and it's like, how, how creative you get to be and how creative uh, you have to be when working with people with disabilities. And a question I had for you is, do you find yourself being more creative when working with uh, people with disabilities or adaptive athletes versus somebody regular? Yeah. Um, my, my creativity level has, has skyrocketed for sure. And, and I, I can't take all the credit for it. I think one of the, the most important parts of my job is understanding the athlete I'm working with um because everyone's story is different and that athlete to coach relationship is the most important um i will never know the actual feeling that the athlete is having so having that transparency and having a really good relationship on how does that feel you know what is this like for you is it painful is it a good painful is it a bad hurt a right good? right right who knows <laughs> so yeah so i think the creativity is um, definitely not all on me. Um, I, I just think big picture and the feedback I get from the athletes is one of the most important pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and then picking other people's brains. I've had the luck um, to be in the USOPC and surrounded by some very, very smart people who have been in this longer than I have. Mm -hmm. um, and even with that, though, they're <laughs> looking for because you want to get like Coming up with creative ideas, um, trying to work like attaching bands to doors or tables or, you know, right. work it, working on your living room floor. Like what, what do you have available? Um, one of my athletes, I just found that one of the best um, training devices um, for one of my athletes uh, who's in a wheelchair is um, furniture sliders on her carpet. Oh. So rather, rather than constantly trying to do a, a, a stationary push-up, now there's mobility. There's all this, you know, there's yeah. some variation. So, yeah. Oh, it's starting to rain. Uh oh, I want to move inside. Yeah. I'm, I'm just going to move under the, the uh, yeah. awning. Totally. And kind of elaborating, going off what you said, you know, I actually have a friend, his name is Buster, and he is, uh, he is a high-level spinal cord injury, but he's able to actually go out and surf waves which is super cool um he has two people who give him hand he has uh, a catcher and a spotter and uh so somebody will give him a push into the wave and he's able to actually surf and then at the end he has somebody who's able to catch him and bring him back out to the spotter and get him back into another wave um but something he does to work on his paddling or to work on being able to surf the way he does is uh he does push-ups and sliding things like that and so that that's awesome you brought that up uh what are some areas, you know, if you start to think about people who have a spinal cord injury and who may be newer to spinal cord injuries or maybe living with a longer term spinal cord injury and they've had it for a few years, uh, what are some specific groups that they would want to really focus on that could help them, um, you know, be, be a better athlete? Yeah, um, it's a good question. Again, I'm kind of going to revert back to it depends on the athlete, right? Uh -huh. um, but if you're if you're looking at, you know, spinal cord injuries overall, and we're focusing, let's say, um, on just primarily upper body, right? Um, I would say the biggest thing is going to be shoulder health, right? And shoulder stability. Um, everything that comes through your traps and your neck um, and being able to have really good range of motion is going to be key. Because if you can have that range of motion, um, I'm also a huge proponent of injury prevention, sure. right? If, yeah. If you get hurt, you're not going to be able to say yes anymore and do those things you absolutely love. So having really good mobility and joint health um, is, is, is so necessary. So some of those areas you'd want to focus on, um, like I said, your shoulder health, your rotator cuffs, um, your pecs, your lats, yeah. your traps, like really focusing on that upper area. 
not only ensuring are they strong, right? Mm -hmm. But do they have a really good range of motion, right? So some some fun things you can do with a um, like a broom or a dowel yeah. are you know, overhead passes, really All making right. sure your shoulders are movable. Um, you can stretch with those really well. Um, yeah, and, and again, it really depends on the athlete, but I'm a huge proponent of a foam roller. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. You'd be surprised at how much tension we hold in our traps, right? If we're really tense upper body, um, we can hold a lot of tension here that actually affects the entire rest of your body, right? Um, yeah, yeah. It can link to headaches and things like that too. Awesome. So yeah. some areas of focus, I would say for sure, start with mobility make sure you can move well and pain free and then from there start to building up strength yeah and it's amazing what um what you can do and how you can get creative totally yeah mobility is 100 percent key and i think it's important for people to realize too is you know you don't have to be a top level athlete or you don't have to be you know a big athlete at all these are things that you know people who just use recreation and recreating this these are all important things that give you a better healthier life and help you recreate better and happier so and a little bit more stress-free i guess yeah. uh, going you know moving on into other things it's like what if you if you think about it from different athletes you've worked with you know it comes it comes back to the person that you're working with and so some of the people I know you worked with the Alpine team and some of the, the guys who mono ski and the girls who mono ski. And, you know, what is it like working with someone who is newer to um, a, an injury or someone who has been um, dealing with the injury for some time now? Yeah, yeah. The, the nature of the athlete is always different, right? So, again, I know I kind of sound like a broken record, but going back to that, that personal connection, um, sometimes an athlete who potentially is, is newer to either the sport or the injury, right? Because both can um, kind of have a little bit of play into their mental game and their mental psych. Mm -hmm. It's just realizing that wherever they are is okay, right? And I am by no means a psychologist, but understanding that from my, my perspective, um, being a trainer is if they're not willing to share some things, that's okay. And to make sure that they know that you have their back regardless. Mm -hmm. And it's those small steps that are going to make a really big difference, right? Yeah. So regardless of what they're willing to share is um, what I would like to go back to and ask them is like, what about this makes you happy, right? Why are you doing this? What, what kind of brings you joy while you're doing it? And then that's kind of the piece you can reflect back on when you're doing some strength and conditioning or some sure. training, right? So I'm sure you can attest to it's not always the most fun being in the gym, but yeah. if you have some purpose behind it and you understand if I'm doing this exercise, it's to make me stronger to be able to do the things that I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes with a newer athlete, it's just bringing it back to the basics, right? Yeah, like, totally, yeah. yeah. What, do you like, what do you like doing? You know, why are you here? You know, hopefully it's for some reason that they, it brings them some passion or, or maybe they're just looking for a new hobby and they're like, I thought I'd give it a shot. And it's really, yeah. I mean, maybe um, quarantine just sets in and everyone just trying new things and, you know, um, go, you know, taking that and running with it. It's kind of like, there's so many opportunities out there to do simple things um, at home and even kind of anywhere you go. And I think, you know, like you said, you know, you don't have to be, um, a top level athlete you can just be recreating but also something to think about is your purpose and if you have a purpose in there and you have a purpose moving I think that is important to understand what your purpose is and yeah those small steps lead to big accomplishments so um, absolutely yeah and I think too is um, you know for the the longer athlete that's maybe been in the game a little bit um, it can get a little discouraging at times and mm -hmm. things like quarantine could go the opposite right like yeah. Oh, I, I've been doing this for so long and they get in their patterns. It's mm -hmm. sometimes a good time to shake it up and be like, what can you, how can you get creative? What can you um, construct in your house? That's a new way of training. Maybe it's changing a location, yeah. right? Like switching it up and, and finding ways to constantly, you know, give yourself, um, give yourself that spark and understanding of kind of why you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And that, that's great advice um, that you could actually transition over to somebody who is with a newer injury. 
you know, is focus on things that you can do now and realize that you can be, you know, you'll be growing through that process. Uh, it's very important, very important. So what is, this is completely side topic, what is your favorite wheelchair sport or Paralympic sport? Ooh, come on, you're putting me on the spot here. Hey, okay. <laughs> some, some people are going to watch this that I train and be like, you didn't pick my sport. Gonna be like, you didn't pick mine. It's okay, I'm not offended. If you don't like snowboarding or skiing, like, that's not your favorite, it's all good. You know, I'm going to start broad and then I'll get specific. So I'm going to save okay. my butt a little bit. But okay. I, will, I will say um, I was amazed, like, being introduced to the Paralympic world in general, how, how like, I guess I, I'm not going to have the right words for this, but how many sports were actually Paralympic sports, right? That yeah. there, there was that crossover. Um, the new recent one that, and I don't think it is actually a, a Paralympic sport, but activity I'll say is watch is um, um, mountain biking. Like yeah. the, and the amount of technology that I've been able, um, again, I'm kind of going off topic here, but the mm -hmm. amount of technology that mm -hmm. has been produced for um, disabled athletes, right? Is yeah absolutely phenomenal right and i come across something new whether it's on instagram or you know through research from other people there's it's it's amazing once you're introduced to that world how much you can open up and i was introduced in an interesting way you know but through through training but as an athlete i those resources are out there like it yeah. is you know all the organizations you're involved with it's pretty amazing but going back to your question, yeah, your favorite sport? Oh gosh, I'm going. To <laughs> it's gonna be um, soccer or something. No, have no you seen that? It is. It's absolutely it's insane. insane. It's it's, insane. Really, it's really hard to pick one because they're so different. Like, right? Even, okay, I'm going off topic again. But even with <laughs> even with in a sport, uh -huh. that's what's so amazing about like um, whether it's the Paralympics or the activities in general. It doesn't have to be at a competitive state. Is like watching um, a blind skier with a guide. So cool. Is it like I'm on my snowboard and I close my eyes. I'm like, oh dear God. Right. Right. right? Like the, and the power, like the, the teamwork it takes for like the sprinters who have a guide. I um, love that. I love that. It's, it's absolutely amazing. And how you want to talk about a, a relationship. Oh my, yeah. you're full, full trust. I mean, you are person. full together all the time absolutely full trust like yeah. i don't know if i trust anyone that much right like, that's, could you that's, imagine could you imagine like wow that's that's really impressive but then everything from like different skills like to being in a sit ski and just it, it's phenomenal my my favorite sport to watch in general and you're probably going to say that i'm biased though uh -huh. is, is probably border cross hey <laughs> Because, yeah. <laughs> well, there's a couple of reasons. I really wish I was that good on my own snowboard. Uh -huh. um, is, is one. And just. Hey, uh, I think your micro microphone might be covered a little bit. We kind of lost you there for a second. Oh, can you oh, hear me? There you are. Yep, you're back. Yeah, sorry. I was, gonna, I was just saying, like, the head to head competition. Uh huh. Right? In, in Border Cross is um is something well I never experienced myself as an athlete I was always a kind of a, a team sport yeah. um so that was that just is so cool like sometimes when you're when you're there and I've had the experience to be there is like they yeah. start out runway one way and you you can't see them and then the end like um our poor coach gets mad because I get so excited in the radio I stop saying anything and they're like who won who won yeah so, yeah yeah the head-to-head -head piece is pretty, pretty amazing. Um, the amount of skill and technique. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of the border cross, but that doesn't mean other sports are off the table yet. It's just right. I've probably learned more about that one right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, you snowboard, so you kind of got a, a heart for it. So that goes yeah. good, you know. But, yeah, we'll have to get you out. You know what? Next time, instead of doing a coach's race, we're going to do, like, a full, like, staff race. We're going to have everybody race. We're going to get Skitty out there Yeah. <laughs> get everyone going. I like that. I like that. But, yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> what, uh, what, if you could give advice to someone who has a newer injury to keep moving, someone who may have been an athlete or someone who may have never really tried sports but now has this injury, what's some advice that you could give to them? Yeah, um, 
off of the off of the strength and conditioning side a little bit i would just say like find your support people to start okay like find find the people who are going to push you a little bit and then in terms of movement and and like um a new injury is is i would say is go back to the things that you know you're capable of doing mm -hmm. right and and really trust yourself in those and then when it comes to movement patterns don't be afraid to learn something new like oh yeah you're, you're like you're you're gonna find a new way to do something mm -hmm. that might become the new norm okay. and then that and then the old way is gonna be like totally forgotten our brains are really tricky and really yeah. smart and our bodies are like i said they're they're wired together right and so if you can keep an open mind and really be creative uh-huh it, you, you'll be so amazed by what you can do and, and that's so, so true yeah, yeah like new yeah go ahead no i was just gonna say i've personally experienced that where it's you know i've had to learn a new pattern and it's like this is the weirdest feeling thing ever but then it's like somehow it ends up working out better for me now than the old way was and so it's like adopting that new thing took me to the next level you know that's amazing yeah and and then understanding like when movement patterns change right you your your brain then becomes accustomed to those new movement patterns right it's like if you get a little bit hurt you don't want to always like hold your shoulder like this because then right. the next thing you know you're that's going to feel normal right? Right. right so you're going to find like whatever movement patterns you have and the way you need to adapt like it's it's going to be okay and it's going to work right. you're going to find ways to do things that you never thought were possible before um you're probably going to become stronger in areas that could have been your weakness right so finding those little highlights along the way are going to be huge and then yeah it comes back to being creative like how can i do this and what is you know from from a, a new injury standpoint mm -hmm. um looking at the ways things are are still possible versus what what's not possible anymore right? exactly and that brought it home right there i mean that's exactly what it is like that's that's the mo utmost importance and thank you again sadie for your time i appreciate yeah. everything i uh, had a blast you got it i didn't get rained on too hard so that was no problem just one quick change of uh location so yeah. um i really appreciate it and then you know if if anyone does have questions or people do want to reach out feel free to share my information um i'm always you know loving to connect with with new athletes wherever they are and just simple questions if they if they need any input or advice i'll, I'll do my best to yeah. to help and and guide the way way i can so yeah I'm, I'm here to help and i'm always open to learning so if you're like if you want if someone out there wants to put me on one of those um downhill mountain bikes Mm -hmm. and has a really good helmet for me to do it with <laughs> and i'm i'm all ears Send him my email. i love it i love it again thank you guys again and if you guys are listening be sure to stay tuned um we're gonna be coming with more videos each week so thank you again sadie um i appreciate it and yep thank you guys you're welcome take care